the, the acid test really is if the if the ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, does Mars die out? Like I think we, we maybe have a shot of sending or you know trying to send something to Mars in three years, but the window is is four years away because of the being in the different parts of the solar system. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So Elon Musk recently spoke to the Mars Society. There's a link in the description to the full discussion. In this video, we're going to hear what Elon had to say about why, when, and how SpaceX plans to colonize Mars. This includes some insights into the process of innovation, as well as the Starship development, and also the potential of exploring other planets and bodies within the solar system so let's get into the video but first hey guys if you live in the US and would like up to two free stocks valued up to $1,600 each use the link in the description to Webull and deposit $100 in your account each of these stocks will be a minimum of $8 in value so if you suck at math that is a 16% ROI on 100 bucks not bad and if you're in Australia the UK or New Zealand you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description let's get back to it I think it's helpful to have as the objective the creation of a self-sustaining city on Mars. I think this is this is, has to be the objective, not simply a few people or a base, but a self-sustaining uh, city. Um, the, the acid test really is: if these if the ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, does Mars die out? For any reason, it could be from but it could be any banal, or it could be nuclear Armageddon, doesn't matter. If the, if the ships stop coming for any reason, does the city on Mars die out? If it does, we have not, we're, we're not in a secure place. I'm really curious, so let me know in the comments below, how much time do you spend, if any, thinking about Mars and the future colonization of the planet? To be real with you guys, I have lost a lot of sleep, especially in my adult life and late teens, worrying about what if an extinction level event wipes out all life on Earth? There's so many things that can occur that are completely outside of our control or our ability to do anything about that could wipe us out like that. So I'd love to know if you spend time thinking about this or not. I think uh, we, we want to be on track to become a multi planet species and, and a space bearing civilization in order to find out what the universe is all, all about, like what, you know, uh, and ensure the continuance of consciousness as we know it. As far as we know, we're the only life. I mean, people think there's aliens, but honestly, I haven't seen any sign of aliens. So as far as we know, we're the only li the the only life. Uh, whether we could be the only life, so let's put it that way. And we need to take the set of actions that are most likely to make the future good and result in the continuance of consciousness as we know it. As a lifelong space and science nerd, I'm completely on the same page as Elon here. We've got to get out and explore the solar system and eventually the stars. And of course, just from a logical point of view, it's imperative that we back up life as soon as possible. And I agree with Elon that there's no evidence of there being any other life out in the universe. However, I think just probabilistically, it is exceedingly unlikely that the universe isn't teeming with life. However, the vast distances mean it may be very unlikely we'll ever encounter any other forms of life to be able to verify this. But in either case, we must act as though we're the only life and the only intelligent life in the universe. I'd love to know what you guys think about this idea, this topic. As conscious life itself, do you feel that you have a duty to try and protect and ensure that consciousness can continue into the future? Let me know below. Well, it's not like I, I we're obviously venturing into unknown territory, so it's not as though I I, I have all these secret dates and I, I and I am, you know, just keeping them from people. But <laughs> so, so the, my, these are just guesses, obviously. 80 to 90 percent confident that we will reach orbit with Starship next year. I think probably 50 or 60, 50 percent confident that we'll be able to bring the ship and booster back. That's like that's more of a dicey situation. But we'll probably lose a few ships before we, we really get the atmospheric return and landing right. Hopefully we don't lose any boosters because that's a lot of engines. Our initial booster flights will just have maybe two to four engines, not 28. <laughs> 28 is a lot of engines. Yeah, and then I think we'll probably be doing high volume flights, I think probably in 2022, so a couple of years from now. But I'm, I'm trying to make sure that, that our rate of innovation increases, it does not decrease. Um, it, this is really essential. In fact, if we do not see something close to an exponential improvement in our rate of innovation, we will not reach Mars. If it's exponential, I think we, we could get to Mars. We could, we could probably send an uncrewed mission there in maybe four years. Yep. 
Elon Musk just said SpaceX could be headed to Mars in four years. Of course, we have to factor in Elon time, the unexpected, etc. But if things go reasonably well, there aren't any major unknown unknowns that prop up, then we could see Starship literally in four years, in no time at all, on its way to Mars. I mean, this is incredible. We're almost there. You know, anyone who is a strong advocate for Mars, I think this really makes a difference. You know, um, a lot of times it's not even, people aren't even thinking about it. And, you know, you can talk to people at a party and they, or talk to friends and like, it's just even, not even a, a topic of conversation. So I think it could really help if for everyone out there who, who thinks this is important for the future of humanity and consciousness as a whole, um, to make it part of what people are thinking about. Bring it up at, at parties and talking to friends and online. It's like, it should be a thing that we do. I'm with Elon on this one. Discuss the concept of Mars and the reasons why with friends, family, everyone who'll listen, maybe even those who won't. In fact, some of my most fulfilling and enduring friendships have come as the result of these kind of deep, big picture conversations about the meaning of life, existential threats, these kind of things. So don't be shy, get the conversation started. And I think it's worth, uh, you know, maybe 1% of our resources, at least. Um, and that's not going to fundamentally change change things, you know, quality of life. If we have one, if we spend 1% of our resources, you know, much less than healthcare, obviously, probably even less than we spend on cosmetics, frankly, um, then that, that would be enough to make life multi-planetary. But I, we really need to bring, make this a thing people talk about at least 1% of the time. And that, that would really matter. Um, like the, as we were talking about earlier, we need we need the will, which is we need a, a critical mass of people wanting to make it happen. The, and, and then we need the way. And stay, SpaceX is going to try hard to provide the way. And, and then once we show that there's a way, probably there'll be other companies that also try to do it as well. So we need the will and the way. They can provide either. The will is extremely important. It makes a huge difference. So SpaceX will provide the way. I'm very curious to know, do any of you watching have the will? Anybody considering going to Mars as part of that initial colony to actually build a self-sustaining civilization on Mars? And really think deeply about this. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Quite the opposite. It's going to be extremely difficult, arduous. You're basically signing up to climb Olympus Mons. Can you talk a little bit about how Starship could be used for other destinations in the solar system like Venus and the outer planets? The Starship is is definitely a generalized uh, ship. It, it basically can it 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 solves for transport anywhere in the solar system that where, where there is a solid surface to land. <laughs> so if you can land there, we're gonna take there. Man, I've been waiting for this since I was a kid. Just think about all of the science and exploration we can do when we have reliable transportation around all of the objects in our solar system. We, we're also actually. Uh, go into the atmosphere of Venus, for example, just like going to orbit and perhaps to the upper atmosphere. Venus's atmosphere is extremely dense, also quite hot. But because of that dense atmosphere, you could you could have something, you could have a kind of like a, some sort of dirigible, you know, kind of some kind of like, the, like things that could float on Venus that could not float on Earth in the atmosphere because of the dense atmosphere. So you could go to Venus. I mean, it's not a super friendly place. And then like Mercury is super hot. I think that we could go to Ceres or any of the asteroids, uh, the moons of Jupiter, although there be quite high radiation around there, and then out to Saturn, eventually getting out to, you know, the sort of Kuiper belt, Earth cloud, and that kind of thing, the outer solar system. So, so Starship, once you have propellant depots, you can kind of like planet hop or moon hop um, around the, the solar system. It's not, it's not a vehicle that would enable us to go interstellar. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one. But it, we need to make this, the, the leap of going to another planet. First, once we are a multi-planet species, we will create a forcing function for the rapid improvement of, uh, of space flight and, um, and we'll figure out new technologies that will ultimately allow us to go to other star systems. Man, it makes my spine tingle just hearing this. Since a kid, I've been dreaming about exploring the planets, the solar system, and then ultimately the stars, and it's finally beginning to happen. We now have a path to make this possible. Is anyone with me, or you think I'm completely mad? Like, seriously, if there was a Starship Enterprise today, I'd be like, bang, sign me up. What do you look for in the people you hire, especially the engineers? Uh, I really just look for evidence of exceptional ability. So it's not, or at least aspirationally, like sometimes these things get messed up in recruiting or the recruiting fault of being, ends up being wrong. Like I sometimes wonder with Tesla, if Nikola Tesla applied to Tesla, would we even give him an interview? It's not clear. You know, this guy came from like some weird college in 
somewhere in Eastern Europe. Is he, is he got some odd mannerisms. Now we don't know if we should give him an interview. Like I, I worry that that's actually what we do instead of like, right? It should be like, man, Nicholas, this 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 kid's super smart. What, what does he want? We'll pay him anything. That should be <laughs> that, that should be the reaction if Nikola Tesla applies. You know, to Tesla, um, ironically. Uh, but so, so, but I can tell you, the intent is we're looking for evidence of exceptional ability, uh, and it really doesn't matter if you went to graduate high school or college or anything. We're just looking for evidence of exceptional ability, uh, such that it would be a good predictor for doing exceptional things at SpaceX. I think this is a great note to wrap up on. If you do happen to have exceptional ability, I implore you, please go get a job at SpaceX and help get us exploring the planets and ultimately out into the cosmos. And for everybody else. Let's talk more about Mars. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Open a new Webull account, deposit $100, and you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel. You'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server, and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again